Good morning, everybody. We are so glad that you have decided to join us this morning or night or whatever time of day it is that you've decided to join us. We are super glad that you have made time to join us as we worship, as we study this morning. We've got tons of great stuff planned for you. We're going to start with our call to worship. These are statements that we say every week just to kind of put us into a worshipful mindset before we start to sing. And so I'll say the first part and you repeat back the second part. You ready? Just one thing. Live worthy. The gospel. And let's all say this part together. Jesus came, died, and rose again, making a way to God. And now, wherever it is that you are, whether you're at home, in the car, maybe you're out somewhere else, stand up, sing with our worship team this morning. Step out of the shadows, step out of the grave, break into the wild, and don't be afraid, run into wide open spaces, graces waiting for you, dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. There is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. There is freedom. Come out of the dark just as you are into the fullness of His love. For the Spirit Come back to communion, come back to the start. Run into wide open spaces, grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted, grace is waiting where the spirit of the Lord is there. Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark just as you are into the fullness of his love. For the spirit is he let there be freedom. Let there be will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom there is freedom where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom there is freedom come out of the dark just as you are into the fullness of his love for the spirit is he let there be free
You all sounded phenomenal. Thank you so much for singing along with our worship team this morning. As we move into our teaching time, we want to also say our Grow Zone Truths. This is kind of like our call to worship in that I'll say the first part and you'll repeat back to me the second part. It's different in that these are statements actually taken from Scripture. These are real truths that the Bible speaks into your life. And so I'll say the first part and you'll say the second part. God loves me and made me. Jesus died for my sins. Jesus is always with me. I am called by Jesus. And God gives us joy. Fantastic. Let me pray for us as we move into our teaching time today. Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you for each individual that's uh, logged in right now, God. Wherever and whenever that may be, I pray that you would speak truth and love and wisdom into their life right now, God. That we would listen with, with ears, eyes, and hearts open to receive, God. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Have you ever heard of someone in the Bible named Paul? Many of you have, I'm sure. How many of you have ever heard of someone in the New Testament named Saul? Hi everybody, I'm Shay Phillips and today we are going to hear an awesome story about a man named Saul and also named Paul. And I'm so glad that you decided to join us. As you may already know, Paul and Saul were the same person. Paul was a great follower of Jesus and a great missionary for Jesus. He was called Saul before he became a Christian. But after he became a Christian, the Bible refers to him by the name Paul. Now, I need to ask you to do something as we go through the lesson. There are three very important words that I want you to listen for. The first one being enemy, and then blindness, and tent. You think you can do that? Good. We'll come back and discuss the importance of those three words right after we watch this really cool video and check in with our friends from the barn, or our barn friends. Stay tuned. Trackers of Faith, featuring Duke and Luke, the Barn Brothers, Penny, the cold cracking tech savvy gal who is quick on her feet, Walker, the big hearted handyman who uses his mechanical know how to lend a helping hand, Jenny, the fun loving biblical brains of the operation, and Milton. This super sassy swine has been fitted with the latest in animal communication technology. Join this crew of high-tech heroes as they sow truth, know truth, and grow truth. Tractors of Faith! I can't believe you knocked out the lights. We're not going to harness the power of the flashlight in the dark. But Jade, it's a flashlight. Maybe the only way to harness its power is in the dark. Whoa, that might be the smartest thing I ever said. Ugh, I just can't with you right now. Can we get the lights back on? Yeah, I already called the neighbors. They should be here any... Now. They should be here now. Ugh, this is so embarrassing. Hey guys, having trouble? Don't worry about that. It's Luke working on the exterior breaker. And there we go. Hey, thanks. Don't mention it. The wiring in these barns can get a little weird after strong winds, but we're pretty good at fixing that by now. Right. Yeah, d the wind. Definitely. Uh, anyway, thanks. I don't want to live in the darkness any longer than I have to. We don't want you to either, in more ways than one. Listen, the crew and I were talking, and there's something we think you should see firsthand. It actually has a lot to do with darkness and light. So that means we get to take the flashlight? You bet. That's all. He's a really bad guy. Like, really bad. His life's mission was basically to arrest and kill anyone following Jesus after his death. Right now, he's on the road to Damascus, where he's going to take prisoner any Christians he can find. Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. 
I'm blind. I, I can't see. That was pretty trippy. It gets better. Check this out. Ananias. Yes, Lord? Go to Straight Street and ask for a man named Saul. He's praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, I have heard about this man and I am nervous. What if he wants to hurt me like he has hurt other followers? Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may again be filled with the Holy Spirit. I, I can see! Even trippier! So that soul guy was a really bad guy, but Jesus showed up out of nowhere and changed everything just out of the blue? That's right. God had an important plan for Paul's life, but he had to change first. He couldn't live in the darkness anymore. God can, and wants to, use everyone, no matter how many mistakes they have made. There's no mistake that we can make that's too big for God to forgive. He forgives us, takes our sins away from us, and makes us into new creations. We've talked a lot about this over the last few weeks, and I'm wondering if you guys might want that for yourselves. Zephy and I have been talking about that a lot, and yeah, I think we want to follow Jesus like you guys do. How do we do that? Well, it starts with a prayer where you invite Jesus into your heart. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you learned lots. How about we talk about what you learned from the video? Like, what significance does the word's enemy have in the story of Paul? At first, Paul was an enemy of Jesus and his followers. That's right. Before he became a Christian, he did many terrible things. He was an enemy of Jesus, and in fact, he was responsible of many Christians being killed. Isn't that scary? He had them killed simply because they loved Jesus. I mean, who would do that? Does he sound like someone whom God would call to follow him? Saul, before he became Paul, hunted many Christians and followers of Jesus to take them back in chains, to kill them. So why would God choose Saul, who was killing all of his followers, to do something of his will? But see... God would call anyone to be a missionary. Maybe not to us it seems like to make sense, but God has a bigger and better plan than we could ever imagine. We find this story in Acts 9, 1, 19, that Saul was on the road to Dominicus to try and take more Christians as prisoners. How about we read Acts 9, 1 through 19 and find out what just happened to Saul before he became Paul. If you have your Bibles, you can open to Acts 9, chapter, chapter 9, verses 1 through 19. Saul's conversion. Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Dominicus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. He was approaching Dominicus on this mission, and a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. And he fell on the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked, and the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Dominicus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. Now there was a believer in Dominicus named Ananus. The Lord spoke to him in a vision, calling, Ananus. Yes, Lord, Ananus replied. The Lord said, Go over to Straight Street, to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Toraz named Saul. He is praying to me right now. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananus coming and laying his hands on him, so he can see again. But, but Lord, exclaimed Ananus, I have heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. 
and he is authorized by the leading priest to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. But the Lord said, Go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles, to the kings, as well as to the people of Israel, and I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Aeneas went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. Afterward he ate some food and regained his strength. So that's how Saul was called by God. That's how he became a Christian. Saul, who is now called Paul, spent the rest of his life taking the good news of Jesus' life, death and resurrection, to the ends of the earth. When he met Jesus, he overcame his physical blindness and his spiritual blindness. He went on to lead many people to Jesus. Much of the New Testament in the Bible is actually written by Paul as he was inspired by the Holy Spirit. So basically, he wrote down what God inspired him to do. Isn't that incredible? His words are still changing lives today. They could be changing yours. So now we know what the significance word of the enemy is in the story and the significance of the word blindness. But what about the word tent? If you go on to read in Acts, in Acts 18, we find something very interesting about Paul. While he was a Pharisee, he was also a professional tent maker. <laughs> Isn't that a pretty cool job? Early on, it was his tent making that supported his ministry. And God did mighty things for him in the midst of what seemed to be a very average day-to-day -day job. What do you think God's calling you to do? Do you even think he's calling you to do something where you are right now? Do you even think you're important enough for God to call on you? Or do you think that you've messed up so much that why would he even look down on you? To call on you. But look at the story of Saul, who became Paul. Saul disobeyed God so many times, but yet his heart still loved him. And so God came to Saul, and he changed him. He opened his eyes, and he opened his heart to his will. God can open your eyes and your heart, too. Whether you think your day is just as average as any other people, God doesn't. In fact, you can do God's will right where you are. If you're at home, why not helping your family out? Being an inspiration to your younger siblings and older siblings. Giving compliments to your parents and helping them with chores without being asked. Or when you go back to school, just helping others, helping your friends, or maybe someone who doesn't seem like they have a friend, giving compliments and helping out your teacher. And how about standing up for what you think is wrong? God is calling you to do something, and he is calling you to do something great, no matter how big, small, old, or young you are. He loves you, and he has a plan for you. So there are two thing, main things we can learn from Paul. First, we don't have to be a professional minister or a preacher for God to use us. We don't have to go to a fancy school and read the Bible 24-7. God can use us no matter where we are or what we do. He wants to use you right where you are. Can God use you? Of course, and he is. Second, God can and wants to use everyone no matter who you are no matter how many mistakes you've made. There is no mistake that we can come and God can overcome our mistakes, and that we can always come to him. He forgives us and takes our sins away from us, just like he took away Paul's sins. He loves us and forgives us, and he wants us to give back to him. We want to serve the Lord, not because we think we need to try to win his approval, but because we already have his approval. And we are so grateful for it. God loves us. God loves you because you are a child of God. And just like Saul, God is calling you to do something, to do something great. It might take time. It might take patience.
But I want to challenge you to just sit still and to listen to what he is calling you to do. Because I can promise you, it is great. How about we pray real quick? If you will, wherever you are, bow your heads with me. Let's praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, God, Jesus, you are our light. You are our way. And we as humans can sometimes be blind to that. Saul was blind to your will at first, but you opened his eyes. And not only did you open his eyes, but you opened his heart. And so, God, we come and we pray to you. Open our eyes. Open our hearts. What are you calling us to do? We live in a day where things are confusing and we're not sure what's going to happen. But you do. Your will will be done. But how can we help it be done? What are you calling us to do to be a part of it? God, today we have learned a very important story. That no matter how many times we mess up, no matter how many mistakes we made, when we seek your love, your love is with us. So God, forgive us. Forgive us for all the mistakes that we have made so that we can come to you and that your will be done. We love you, our Heavenly Father. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us today, and I hope to see you next time. Y'all have a great week.